So this is where something comes in called a blockchain. The blockchain is as disruptive to centralized value transaction as email was to mail communication. It gets putting it back in the hands of the people. So what is a blockchain? Well, a block is a number of financial transactions that happen over a period of time. So this is block A, and block A has one, two, three, four. And let's suppose that was one minute, could be 10 minutes, doesn't matter, it's a period of time. So in one minute, there was four transactions there. That's a block. Well, in the next minute, how many transactions happened? Block two, which would be block B, had one, two, three. And block C had one, two, three, four, five. So now when I, if I wanna look things up, I can go and say, well, you know, find me C2. And I know exactly what minute that happened and I can get the whole chronological history of everything that happened. So that series of blocks is just something called a blockchain and is a continuous ledger. So I just want you to understand that because it's important for where we're going with this. So, okay, that's the blockchain. It has a big effect. Now the blockchain is a decentralized, transparent public ledger that contains every transaction ever processed and enables any user's computer connected to it to see and verify every transaction. Get the idea? Like email or social media, everybody has access to it. But what's great about this in terms of financial information, everybody can see the blockchain. So you can see every transaction. There's no secrets. Centralizing has lots of secrets. Nobody knows anything. You have to be verified by somebody. No secrets here, totally transparent. I'm gonna show you that as we go. So another big difference about decentralizing, everything is pushing instead of pulling. Let me describe those two things, pushing instead of pulling, all right? In a centralized banking system like checks, credit cards, anything you can think of, you know, going to an ATM or anything like that, you give permission for them to pull from your accounts to make payments. So you have an account and what you do is uh, somebody writes a check and they take that out or you write a check, they take that out. They have the right to go to that other person's check because they're who they are and pull money out of that account and give it to you. But they have to pull it out, okay? It's not like the other person just gave it to you, it's pull. Same thing with a credit card. When you go credit card, you're pulling money as opposed to pushing money. So that makes you part of a hackable database. Because this database is there, someone can find out about it. The other thing about this pulling system is that if something goes wrong and a couple of checks bounce or identity theft or anything like that, all of a sudden they can close your account or they can hold it. There's a lot of things that can happen. Basically, they own your account, not you. And I think some of you have experienced that type of thing. Well, in a push situation, like a decentralized system, value can only be pushed from one secure encrypted account owner to another. So it's like a cash transaction. If I have cash and I want to give it to you, only I can give it to you. You know, you can't pull it away from me. You can't hack into this cash that's in my hand. I've got cash and if I want to give it to you, I have to push it to you. I have to give it to you, okay? So if that's the case, there's no need for personal identification. There's no need for us to have accounts. There's an open record and a verification that was done with account balances. And that's how we know. If I gave you that $10 and I asked somebody to verify that, then great, I did that, you got it, it's verified, it's done. And we don't have to worry about it anymore because we weren't involved in past dues, we weren't involved in credit, we weren't involved in anything. So it's very much like a cash transaction. But the great thing about the pushing technology or the decentralized, remember that part, everybody can see it. So here's this ledger and every user can see and verify every single transaction to make sure it happens. In fact, certain people specialize in verification, and that's another neat part about this blockchain technology. The part of the blockchain technology is it only push from one member to another, that there is a group of people that verify it, and that's what makes the system so unique, and that everybody can see it. So I guess it would be those three things that make it so unique. So now, just like the internet made it possible to send information anywhere in the world, we now have the ability to transmit value anywhere in the world using this push technology that we're talking about here. So there's no central authority. The security is put in the hands of the end users of the system because everybody can see all the transactions and a certain number of people will have to verify the transactions that they happen. And the collaboration of the thousands of participants in the network make it peer to peer. That's what that diagram represents there. So no, I want you to understand that this technology is new and evolving. What I mean by that is just getting better. It doesn't mean that it's doubtful because the blockchain technology is absolutely working. It's just a brilliant idea whose time has come and it's another form of decentralization. 
What I basically mean now is kind of like where the internet was back in 1990 or 1994 when I was talking. Look at the advances that they made. There's going to be more and more layers of advancement on top of this. So we're pretty new in the game but not so new that there's any doubt about the game. So that's what's important to understand that this is a very solid way of doing things. I just really want you to understand, you know, what it is and why it's so good.